Howdy guys, welcome back. Today we're going to go over a uh, few more parallels between Joseph and Jesus. I hadn't quite finished uh, what I set out to do yet. I might make one more video after this one about it, but I want to make sure I get out and try to get as many of these as I can because there are so many cool parallels between the life of Joseph and Jesus. So we need to get back to it in Genesis 39. We'll read uh, verse 1. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of, out of, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. Okay, so, if you're reading, I'm just going to uh, give you the verse and let you read it, because we've got a lot to cover. So, Matthew 2, 3 shows that Jesus was also brought down to Egypt. So, they both ended up going down to Egypt. They were for different reasons, but they both ended up in Egypt at one time of their life. Now we're going to skip down to uh, verse 4 of Genesis 39. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had put into his hand. So, this is what I was really wanting to, to talk about today, is let's look at the things that Joseph is set over, and has power over, and the things that Jesus is set over and has power over. Okay, so the first one we get to is Potiphar's house. Now, uh, so Joseph was set to rule over three main things. I'm just going to try to shorten the video. I'm not going to go through each and every one of them, but I'm going to try to get to uh, get to these as quick as you can. So first of all, we need to know from earlier passages, from his dreams he had, that he is going to be, he is the ruler over the house of Israel. All the brothers, remember the dreams of the stock and all the other stock that paid homage to it. So he's the ruler over the house of Israel. Now I want to make sure to, to uh, emphasize this as well, is that now, in our time we're living now, in grace period, Gentiles are also within the house of Israel. And it was in that time too in the uh, Old Testament as well, not during this time, because Gentiles and Jews, Jews wasn't a nation yet. But, uh, you know, during the Old Testament and the prophets and stuff, when Israel was a nation, G uh, Gentiles that believed in God would be a part of their nation, okay? Um, but I want to go to, uh, let's go to Matthew 2 through 6, and let's look at Jesus really quickly. So, now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, this is chapter 2 of Matthew. In the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. I really want to do a video on who these guys are. It's, there, there's uh, some interesting stuff about that. Saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled, and all of Jerusalem with him. And he gathered the chief priests and the scribes of the people together. He demanded to know... Uh, demanded of them where the Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. So the ruler is Jesus. The wise man come looking for the king of Israel, the king of the Jews. Now let's go to Romans 11. Uh, thir 11, 13 through 17. Now this is why I want to say, uh, make sure you add in, the Gentiles are also now a part of the commonwealth of Israel. Okay? Uh, you can. There's also passages in John where he talks about uh, uh, the, uh, those that follow Abraham's teachings are the children of Abraham. So, just because you're born of this, you know, the same lineage as Abraham doesn't make you children of Abraham. It's the spirit of Abraham, okay, that makes us children. Okay, spiritual children. So, verse 13 of uh, chapter 11 in Romans, For I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify in mine office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are of which are my flesh and might save some, that's the Jews. He was trying to provoke some of the Jews to jealousy so that they might be saved. Okay? For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, but shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead. Okay? 
must continue. For if the first fr fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. But if some of the branches be broken off, those that disbelieve, those that rejected the Messiah, uh, broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree, who is thou, Gentiles, being of a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and then with them partakest of the root and the fatness of the olive tree. So the olive tree is Israel. The bad branches are broken off, the disbelieving branches. The believing Gentiles, those that put their faith in Jesus Christ and are now within him, are grafted into that olive tree. We are now a part of the commonwealth of Israel. Um, so boast not against the branches. Let's see. Well, that was, that was good right there. We'll stop there because i got a lot to go. So Gentiles are also, believing Gentiles are also part of the commonwealth of Israel. So Jesus is the king of Israel, and that means all us who believe, the church and all, okay? Now let's continue back in Genesis. This is uh, verses 8 in chapter 39. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, now I just want to go through this really fast. This is just a quick... No, we'll, uh, I'll save that for the next video. My apologies. We'll save that for the next video because there's some interesting topics with this. So let's go to chapter 39, verse 22 to focus on this one area. And then, and then okay, so Joseph ends up having his wife, uh, Potiphar's wife tries to come on to him and tries to get him to sin with her. But he refuses. But then she ends up lying and... Uh, uh, false accusing Joseph of sinning with her, or trying to sin with her. And so Potiphar comes home, he gets pretty upset, and he throws Joseph into the prison. Okay, and that's where the story's going to pick up here. Uh, uh, verse 22, And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in prison, in the prison, and whatsoever they did, he was the doer of. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand, because the Lord was with him, and that he and what that which he did, the Lord made it prosper. So Joseph is made the ruler over all those that are in prison. Okay, all the prisoners. Let's go to Peter. Now I've already I've said this verse before to y'all, maybe in a couple times, but this coincides with Jesus. Now let's go to First Peter three nineteen. Okay, 1 Peter 3.19. Now this is Jesus. He goes, By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient, when once the longsuffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing, wherein a few, that is eight souls, were saved by water. So Jesus, after he, you know, when he was crucified, went into Sheol, okay, the, that was uh, there's some interesting topics regarding that as well. That's another rabbit hole. But it's but Peter says he went to the spirits that were in prison in Sheol in the grave dead and preached to them those that had already passed. So Jesus is also the king over not only the people that are living but also those that have already died, those that had died before he came and those that die now. He is still the ruler of all. Okay, those in prison and death. Now we got to go to one more place. Let's see here. We got to go back to Genesis 41. Now this is when he is uh, raised up and is made ruler over the kingdom uh, or the nation of Egypt. And by this, he ends up being the de facto ruler over many nations because all those other nations had to come to him during the very bad drought. And to, and to ask for provisions. So this is uh, 41 verses 37. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and the eyes of his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is a, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And the Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God hath showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be ruler over my house, and according unto thy word shall, thy, shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. Okay, so Joseph is made ruler over the entire nation of Israel, uh, Egypt. Okay? The entire nation, all authority is given unto him. Now let's go to 
Matthew again, Matthew 28, and see the parallel. Okay? This is the very last chapter of Matthew, Matthew 28, verses 18 and 20. Okay. And this is Jesus' last things he speaks to his disciples before he ascends. Okay. And picking up in verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So Joseph, he is, made, he is ruler over the house of Israel. He is ruler over those in prison. He is ruler over the nation of of Egypt and other nations that had to come to Egypt. Jesus is ruler over the house of Israel and he is ruler over those that have long passed, those that were in the prison, and he is ruler over all the nations. So I hope this was edifying. Thank you so much for listening and God bless.